good morning students now we are going to revise the chapter gravitation the second chapter of uh, which is coming in, a, in our examination that is the gravitation in this chapter we have studied that uh, what is the gravity what is the gravitational force actually what is the gravitational force we know that every object in this universe has some mass so every object in this universe attract another object with a force which is called gravitational force every object like the planet uh, with the sun the, the gravitational force is uh, also acting between the sun and the planets the planet and the satellites so all the objects in the universe even this uh, this sketch pen and this copy i have already uh, give this example to you that all the object in this in this universe have some attraction force which is called the gravitational force and what is about the gravity for the earth it always attract other object towards the center and this attraction force is called the gravitational force or we can say the gravity of the earth this is the gravity of the earth and the acceleration produced in the object which falls on the earth is called the acceleration due to gravity in this chapter we start from uh, what is the gravity and what is the gravitational force the scientist sir isaac newton was the first scientist who observed that every object on this earth is falls on the earth because of this gravitational force and this gravitational force not only uh, act between the earth and the other object it also act between the different objects in this universe so according to uh, him he go, he gave a law this is called the universal gravitational law according to this law if two object having the mass m1 and m2 suppose there are two objects having the mass m1 and m2 i am writing here m1 and m2 these are the two objects of different mass and they are placed at a distance of d meter from each other mass having m1 m2 and having a distance between them is and according to newton the force which is act between these two object is directly proportional to the product of their masses that is m1 and m2 and is inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them that is inversely proportional to the 1 upon d square and by combining these two forms we can say directly proportional to the m1 m2 upon d square first of all you have to write the law universal law of gravitation what is the meaning of universal law of gravitation you will say that every body in the universe attract another body with a force that is directly proportional to the product of their masses and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them and by uh, then you have to write all these values that is f is the force suppose f is the force which is acting between the two object having the mass m1 and m2 and the distance between them is d so according to newton's law of gravitation we can see f is directly proportional to the m1 m2 upon d square and we have to remove this sign by using a constant value that is g so we can say f is equal to g m1 m2 upon d square now what is the g here g is called the universal gravitational constant it is very important universal gravitational constant you know why it is called the universal gravitational constant because in the universe anywhere in the universe the value of g is constant it do not changes we can change the mass of the object we can change the distance between the object but the value of g don't changes and by uh, by an experiment it was found that if two object of mass 1 kg another object also having the mass 1 kg and they are kept at a distance of 1 meter from each other so the value of m1 is 1 m2 is 1 and d is 1 so if we put these value in this equation we will find it f is equal to g and we find the value of it f that is 6.667 that is 6.67 tenths power minus 11 newton meter square per kg square this is the actual value of the g okay when two object having the mass m1 kg and are kept at a distance of 1 meter then the force acting between them is called the universal gravitational constant this is the value of universal gravitational constant and we found the value that is 6.67 tenths power minus 
and the SI unit of G universal gradation constant is Newton meter square per kg square. Okay, this is the universal gradation constant and most of, most of the numericals are based on this formula. So, you should always remember this formula when there is two mass then there are given two mass of the objects and the distance between these objects and suppose uh, someone asks you then how can you find the dist uh, the how can you find the force of attraction between these two objects then you will find it by using this uh, this formula that is f is equal to g m1 m2 upon r square the value of g is always constant sometimes the values of g is given in the numericals so you can put that value otherwise if there is no value of the g then you can find you can put this value in place of g okay these are some numericals based on this formula so you should do the practice of these numericals uh, by this uh, we can find the attraction force between the earth and the moon or the earth and the sun by finding the mass of the earth and the sun and finding the distance between the center of their uh, earth and the sun we can find the force of attraction which is acting between the earth and the sun okay what will happen if we change the distance between the two objects how the force of attraction between them changes if we double the distance between them suppose the distance between them first time it was d and we uh, and we keep the both the objects far apart suppose the distance between the two objects is now two times the initial value so we can say the force of attraction will be g m1 m2 upon 2d square where 2d because we keep the objects we uh, we keep these two objects at twice the distance um, the distance uh, sorry initially the distance between the two objects is d now we are going to increase the distance between two them between the objects and how much increase the distance we increase the distance by two times so this is the equation one this is equation two and if we divide the equations, uh, yeah, I think you will know, uh, you should know, Balki, you should know how to divide the two values. We know that if you division mein hai, or if you want to make it multiply, then you want to, you have to reciprocal this value. It means 4d square upon g m1 m2. In this case, we are not going to change the mass of the object. We are going to change only the distance between the two objects. m1 m2, okay, now g with the g d square with the d square so f1 upon f2 is equal to 4 that is we can say that f1 is equal to 4 f2 or if we want to find the find if we want if we want to find the value of f2 we can say that f2 is equal to f1 upon 4 it means the value becomes 1 fourth it means if we if we double the distance between them if the double the distance between the two objects the force of attraction becomes 1 fourth time can you imagine if we double the mass of one of the object then what will happen if we double the mass the force will also become double if we double both the masses then the force will become four times so it means the force of attraction between the objects is depend on the mass of the objects and the distance between the two object so uh, there are some numericals which are based on this formula again i am telling you that if you have if you find any problem in the numericals uh, from ncrd book or from anywhere else here any from any book uh, you can ask me on your group you can personally you can message me I will I will try to explain you by a video or by writing this numericals by explaining the numericals um, in copy like this okay uh, now uh, this is a formula which we which we used in the uh, which we used to find the attraction force between the two objects okay now uh, we have learned also we have to uh, we have also learned the centripetal force suppose something is moving or revolving around a, another object suppose this is the earth and it is revolving around the sun so there should be some force which make it revolve around the sun and this force is called the centripetal force actually the centripetal force is acting towards the center of the circle due to the centripetal force this planet is uh, is able to revolve around the sun and from where this planet got this force the force of attraction which is acting between the earth and the sun make the planet able to revolve around the sun and this is called the centripetal force 
okay now the free fall what is a free fall if something is uh, ready to falls on the earth without any external force if there is no external force acting on the object and it is free to fall on the earth this type of falling is called the free fall why the object falls on the earth we know that earth attract every other object with a force which is called a gravitational force so due to this gravitational force every object falls on the earth oh one question is rises from this conversation that why this object falls on the earth why earth do not falls on the object though we know that force of attraction acting between these two object and this force of attraction is equal for both the object it means it is equal for this one and it is equal for this one if force of attraction is acting between these two objects then why always this object falls on the earth why earth do not falls on the object so uh, i have told you a formula f is equal to m into a where f is the force and m is the mass and a is the acceleration and in this case where we are using the earth we can say the acceleration is g which is called the acceleration to gravity so if we want to find the if the force of attraction between these two object is same now acceleration is equal to f upon m okay now the acceleration depend on the mass more is the mass less will be the acceleration and less mass will should have the more acceleration about these two objects we know that this object has very less mass as compared to the earth so due to so much less mass the acceleration produced in this object is much higher and the earth has a larger has a huge mass so the acceleration produced in it is negligible so that the object always falls on the earth and earth do not falls on the object okay now we will continue with the free falls so something is free to fall on the earth and this type of falling is called the free fall when an object is falls under the attraction force of the earth under the gravity of the earth it is called the free fall okay so uh, when a object is free to fall on the earth there is some acceleration will be produced in the object because when we act when we force when we apply force on the object its acceleration it um, it gain acceleration or we can say the velocity going to changes if we apply some force on the object what will happen its velocity will be decreases or its velocity will be increases it means the velocity changes or if the velocity going to change we can say the object should have the acceleration it means if earth is applying some force of attraction with of this uh, to this object it means this force of attraction so should be um, should uh, should should it should it should uh, it should provide some acceleration in this object and this acceleration which is provided by the earth due to the gravitational force of the earth is called the acceleration due to gravity because this acceleration is produced by the earth how can we find the value of this acceleration to gravity okay for the earth i am going to explain for the acceleration to gravity on the on the surface of the earth um suppose uh, this is the earth having the mass uh, me and this is the object having the mass m and it is free to fall on the earth now the force of attraction which is acting between these two objects suppose the radius of the earth is re the distance between the uh, earth and the object is uh, is near about re uh, it means the earth has a huge radius so in the comparison of this radius the distance between the object and the earth is so less so we can neglect 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 this value the distance between these two objects so we are going to neglect it and i am going to uh, write the value of distance between them is r e that is the radius of the earth so f is equal to g m m e upon r e square okay this is the force of attraction which is acting between the earth and the object now we know that force is equal to mass multiplied by the acceleration so for this object if we want to find the acceleration of this object we have to write the f is equal to m into g what is the g here g is the acceleration of this object which is produced by the earth so f is equal to m into g 
is equal to g m m e square sorry g m m e upon r e square we can cancel the value same values that is m into m so g is equal to g m e upon r e square it is very important uh, derivation you know the value of acceleration to gravity do not depends on the mass of the object it don't depend on the mass of the object it can be a higher mass it can be a lower mass suppose if we if we drop a feather and a stone at the same time we will find it will reach on the earth at the same time if if there is no air it means if we provide the vacuum here because in the vacuum the resistance of the air is negligible it's is uh, the resistance by the air is uh, cannot be here again uh, the air cannot provide the resistance so that these two objects will falls in equal time to the earth it means the acceleration produced in these two objects is equal it do not depends on the mass of the object and by this derivation we also found that the value of g the value of acceleration produced in the, these two object do not do not depends on the mass of the object ha uh, it can be happen the feather we know that naturally if uh, normally if we do some experiment we uh, we drop something from the roof of the house uh, we drop a feather and a stone we know that stone will come to the earth faster as compared to the Uh, it will take less time as compared to the feather because because there is a air and air will provide the resistance high resistance to this feather due to its lower mass and lower resistance to the stone that's why the stone come to the come um, it it reach to the earth uh, in the short period of time as compared to the feather so this is the acceleration to gravity which do not depends on the mass of the object okay we can find the value of g by valuing by putting the value of g capital g m e and r e square and its value is the near about 9.8 meter per second square this is the value of acceleration to gravity produced by the earth now uh, we have learned the three equation of motion v is equal to u plus at s is equal to ut plus half at square and third one is the v square is equal to u square plus 2s Uh, in case of the gravitational force of the earth it means if we drop if we drop some object from the from some height to the earth or if we throw something in a upward direction then then the acceleration will produced is due to the earth gravitational force so we can replace the value of uh, we can replace the acceleration by g and we can replace the distance that is s by the h because there should be some height and we normally we represent the height with the h so if we drop something from the height or if we throw something in upward direction so we can modify this formula like v is equal to u plus gt okay if we drop something or if we throw something in upward direction h is equal to ut plus half a is half gt square hey you don't need to learn this formula you have only understand that we can replace the s by h because there is not a distance this is the height or we can replace the value of acceleration by the g because this acceleration is produced by the earth and third one is a v square is equal to u square minus sorry plus 2 gh okay now what is about the value of acceleration to gravity it can be positive or it can be negative what uh, when it will be positive it will be positive if we drop something from the height if we drop something from the height the acceleration goes on increasing sorry the velocity goes on in increasing so the value of g will be positive or if we throw something in upward direction what will happen is velocity goes on decreasing so we can say the acceleration will be negative so if we throw something in upward direction we can say the acceleration will be negative if we drop something from a particular height it acceleration will be positive okay there are modes of numerical uh, most of the numericals are based on these equation of motions i have already explained in the um, second last video or if you have if you find any problem you can ask me on the whatsapp group you even you can call me i will i will try my best to explain you next topic is the mass and the weight
because in this short period of time i can explain all the numericals and all the theories so i am going to explain only the theory here because numericals i always explain numerical in every videos so if you had have any problem you can saw your previous videos or you can uh, you can call me you can message me i will explain you now the mass and the weight what is the mass mass is the actual quantity present in the actual matter that is present in this uh, object means um, mass means uh, uh, matter contained in the object is called the mass so what is the quantity of matter present in this object is called the mass mass do not changes if we have anywhere in the universe even on the earth even on the moon or anywhere else the mass do not going to change it always remain constant everywhere but what is the weight weight depend on the mass weight is equal to mass multiplied with the acceleration of gravity by changing the value of g we can change the value of weight suppose if g is equal to 0 uh if we move outwards it means आप अर्थ के सरफेस से बाहर जाओ जहाँ पे आपका ग्रेविटेशन फोर्स काम करना बंद कर दे अब क्या होगा जहाँ पे g की वैल्यू जीरो होगी यू विल फाइंड वेट लेस वेट लेस मीन्स यू विल डोंट हैव एनी मास एनी वेट सॉरी नॉट द मास यू वेट लेसनेस यू हैव सीन ऑलरेडी यू हैव सीन मेनी टाइम्स इन टी वी शोज एक्सेट्रा दैट इन यूनिवर्स द थिंग्स आर ट्राइंग थिंग्स आर ऑलवेज फ्लोट हेयर एंड देयर तो वाई दे आर ऑलवेज फ्लोट्स because there is no weight because they are not feeling any weight because they have only the mass but there is no acceleration of gravity there is no gravity due to which they don't have any mass they don't have any weight so weight depend on the g the value of g what how can be the weight changes if we go into the earth it means the on the surface of the earth the value of g is is maximum if we go towards the center of the earth is values goes on decreasing even if we go in upward direction means if we go up in the surf, uh, if we go up from the surface of the earth the value of go the value of g is also goes on decreasing it means the maximum value of g is at the surface of the earth okay at the center of the earth the value of g is also zero it means at the center of the earth you will not have any weight so value of weight can be uh, can be vary can be change it can be zero even but the value of mass do not changes or it can't be zero it can't be anywhere it can't be zero but the value of weight can be zero if the value of g is zero then the weight will be zero the mass uh, has a si si unit kg and the weight has a si unit uh, weight is equal to mass multiplied with the g means we know that the mass multiplied with the acceleration is called the force so we can say this is a force and the force has a si unit that is newton so we can say the uh, the si unit of weight is Newton. We can find the value of mass by using the beam balance. Beam balance, this type of balance. Okay, this is the beam balance. We can use the beam balance to find the value of mass. Or if we want to value find the value of weight, we have to use a spring balance. A spring balance. A spring balance. We generally use for finding the weight of an object. Okay, A spring balance. now by changing the value of uh, the radius or the mass the value of weight also goes on changes there are some numericals based on it which i have told you in uh, previous videos so you can use your videos to understand the numerical based on the weight the mass and the force of attraction acting between these two objects uh, this is all about the theory about the uh, this is all about the theoretical part of the ch of this chapter and mostly in this chapter we have to do the numericals which are based on these formula this one and this one if you have any problem please you can ask me okay okay bye